Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien Addict. Osvaldo Franco in the house, ufologist from New York. How are you doing, my fella? Great, brother. How are you? Very, very good. I'm going to let you lead the way with this one because, to be quite frank, you know you know more than I do. A hell of a lot more. Um, but what are we going to go through in this show? Oh, my God. There's so... Well, uh, got a bit of an update for those of you that were uh, caught the phenomena. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, where exactly the uh, samples of UFO debris were collected and when. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, a second group of people doing uh, research on metamaterials, not TTSA, and apparently they've made a breakthrough, uh, a considerable one. Uh, and uh, that's coming out right now. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, also, there's a brand new show uh, that has come out called Contact on the Discovery Channel, and it is a really fantastic show. Like uh, everyone's going to be pleasantly surprised. Uh, um, it, 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 it's extraordinarily, it, it's brilliant. Plus, an unexpected update on the bet spheres. Oh, like, so, some, something we've talked about quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I've got some crazy news about the bed sphere, and and it's it's good news. It's like you're gonna like this. Uh, the way we can start wherever you want, brother. Well, I, you know what I want to start with. I just want to briefly touch on Elon Musk nuking nuking Mars. Oh yes, that that's that's a great idea unless it's a bad idea. <laughs> I'll tell you. Do, do you know? Do you know what my thoughts are? I, I mean, I love Elon Musk. I think the guy is great. He's an absolute genius. Uh, Elon, uh, you can send me a Tesla. If you send me a Tesla, Elon Musk, I will allow you to put Newt Mars on the side of the Tesla. I will advertise that shit for you. Now... Yeah, you got to get, get people on board. Here's my thoughts on it, though. I do not think you should nuke anything, especially no, that's not ours, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, bro, like we don't know who's there, and there's indication that something, there might be still activity there. I mean, even if there's like you know microscopic life, who's to say that you know we should clear it, you know, away for like exactly, uh, you know, yeah, life on Earth. That's 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 the thing. I mean, I, I, the thing is with Elon, you can't tell if he's joke. Well, you kind of can tell if he's joking. I think he went no, on the. the sh- Mark Luking is not a joke. He's like totally in on that, and that's like. That's not even his idea. Well, he, that's an idea that's been going on for a long time. And there's like real research and number crunching going on with that. Yeah, but he, he, he mentioned it three years ago and he said there's a few ways of doing it. But if you want to do it fast, you can nuke it. Yeah. And I can't remember whose show it was on. It was um, it was a chat show in America. Um, I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, he, he mentioned it on there. That was about three years ago. And he's all, now he's now he's talking about it again. And I'm kind of like, is he is he for real, or is he is this just another Elon no, Jones tweet? That, that's a that's a real plan. Like I, honestly, if they wanted to melt uh, the ice, I'd rather them use a space mirror or something, um, or some type of reflective like material, and do that. Even if it took a little bit while a little while longer. Um, and also, I, I'm thinking like we need to, like you know, just for good measure, we need to have boots on the ground and several teams yes. there with people. Like I, checking out like all chunks of Mars, you know, making sure there's nothing there, um, making sure we're not going to nuke somebody that's like living underground and vastly well, superior to us it, or whatever yeah, could ha- possibly happen. Exactly. I mean, can you imagine? You, you've just, oh, the land up there is absolutely shot to shit. I'm going to go underneath. And then all of a sudden you just, somebody's raining down nukes on you. You know, this could be a civilization that is millions and billions of years old that is not advanced at all it's just they live underground maybe there is maybe there is something underground surviving on mushrooms or something i don't know yeah dude you like we we don't know like you know well we got is like you know uh at least publicly you know a couple of you know just like surface information you know and i've got a couple of uh uh souped up uh radio controlled cars with labs on their back yeah, but Oz, the scientists out there, they, they know there's nothing up there. They're, they're convinced. Just well, a bit of water. Well, 
there's a whole lot of methane and it's coming from somewhere. Yeah, somebody's fine, aren't they? Yeah, something something more complex is going on there than 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 just like fossils and dust. Yeah, you know? I mean, what did a nuclear bomb do to methane? <laughs> it can explode. It can have a bigger explosion, I would imagine. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, swiftly moving on. But no, what was you saying earlier, though, when we were having that little chat about, you know, um, Mars, it's not the place to be. Yeah, no, because this is the thing. Like, we now, okay, so, uh, this is big. Um, there, uh, We now know that the rumors that have been, uh, like, Deep Prasad and some of these other guys have been talking about for some time that To The Stars Academy was about to announce joint ventures with like Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Uh, we now know from uh, Tom DeLong that this is true. Um, he basically p- posted it on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, and, and basically, and so this is going on and, and it's not for ambiguous stuff either. This is for like, you know, gravity control mechanism and like propulsion based on that, you know, as in terms of like, you know, things that carry people. So, um, this is, uh, definitely going to happen and the thing is this is a huge game changer i mean like theoretically like let's look at what, what uh the the uh the starship which is yeah. probably a much better name now um like a starship is going to be ready in about oh five years and uh these engine systems will be ready in about five years these new ones uh, uh these new drive systems uh from uh ttsa um I'm, and the thing is, everything Elon does is pretty modular. I mean, is it possible to switch out the uh, the fart drive, which is basically what it is? It's a, basically a, a can of farts that you light all the way to Mars. Right, can we switch out the fart drive for something you know a lot faster that works on you know gravity, you know? And um, that's the thing. If, if we do that. I don't see us like, you know, people will go to Mars and there'll be installu- installations and stuff and bases, but uh, I don't think there's going to be tens of millions of people actively living on Mars like that, especially if we can get to a, uh, uh, an extrasolar system with Earth-like planets. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, why not just go to a planet with trees already? Well, the finding... And and water. Well, the finding um, planets in the Goldilocks zones all the time now. Exactly. It's not this like right now. Our problem is that some of the ones that we're the ones that we're finding are a bit too big. You don't want to go to a super Earth. You want you know, and, and and you don't want like something that like would be like a minor Earth, which is basically what Mars would be because the the gravity situation is you know uh, an issue. You want something in and around that's producing in and around nine point eight gravity, just like the Earth is. Like that, it, we have that. Uh, uh, that's going to go a long way in helping with like certain health issues and things like that. And also, you want to get a thriving population. You want to send hundreds of people so they can make thousands more. You know? Well, that's one of the reasons why, if you go to Mars, you live on Mars for a bit, you cannot come back to Earth, can you? Because you, your your body will just. Oh no no no! You could come back to Mars, uh, but you're going to be like weak, and it's going to take you a couple of months. You mean come back to Earth? Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to get readjusted to our gravity. It's not fun like that. Like uh, uh, those astronauts that they, they they put up in the space station for about a year, and they bring them down, and there's a celebration for them. You notice they're not running around and high fiving. You, you know, they're 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 basically sitting and turning their heads because that's what they can do at that point. Right. You know. So uh, and they have to reacclimatize themselves. Now, if you have a family on Mars. If that's even possible, you know, your kids are stuck on Mars. They're not going to go, you know, back to visit their grandparents in England. You know, it's just not going to be a thing that they can do. Perhaps the grandparents can come visit them, but it's not, you know, like I would not, you know, unless they had like some type of Iron Man suit. Yeah. That, you know, that I don't imagine it'd be really comfortable, uh, you know, or, or a long term solution. But yeah, like that's the thing. This technology has happened. We're going to go much farther than Mars. Mars is just like the, the beginning, and not, not only that, Mars won't even be the most interesting spot to go. See, this is the thing for me. I mean, Elon Musk. He talks about going to the moon. He talks about going to Mars, and he he's talking about them venturing out further. Yeah, no, he called. Listen, dude, this also goes into like 
call it speculation, but uh, Elon changed the name uh, 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 to of Starship to Starship. Yeah. And he did it on Twitter, and he got, I think we brought it up a bit, he said that... Uh, uh, it was the like, BFR, wasn't it? Starship, and people were upset because Starship indicates you're going from one star system to another. You know, to use it as a, a general euphemism for spaceship is kind of lame. And uh, Elon said in a response tweet to that uh, himself, um, for his verified Twitter yeah. account, he said that future versions of that craft would be able to do just that. Go from one star system to another. Now, that's a loaded, that's a huge statement. That's a big statement. And then you hear these rumors, which aren't rumors so much anymore, that there are these breakthroughs that have occurred in gravity and that there are going to be starting to trickle out, you know, through mechanisms like to the Stars Academy into the public. Well, this um, is the thing, and this is the thing that I've, that I've been thinking. How come? I mean, he must at some point, ears must prick up a little bit, one way or another, to think. What are these small companies do? Elon Musk must think, Musk must think, find the bum. Um, what is to the Stars Academy doing? He must think they're either. Dude, a, he has to know this stuff. He but listen. Elon is Elon because Elon is Elon. Elon is plugged into all of these things. You know, like uh, I would not be. Elon has to have security clearance. You can't just be like you know launching stuff into space. No, you know you have to, you have to like at least in the states you have to fill out forms and and things like that and get permission and it has to be done in a specific time and like there's all sorts you know they they'll fine you you know if you don't do it right and all et cetera et cetera but uh, yeah, Elon has to know about these things I mean like 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 just from like you know and Elon would say that he would he he studied every method of like you know propulsion. That uh, you know that was basically proposed, and some of those involve gravity and UFOs and things like that. Like he, dude, you're, you're studying German rocketry, but you didn't at least dabble in the bell, doing a little bit of bell research. They've all dabbled in the bell. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, like of course he did. They all know uh, about the how bell. How much uh, progress he made, but they, they, somebody tried. Like, you check everything. Yeah. Especially when you have the resources and the manpower and the brain power that this guy has at his command. You know, I mean, honestly, he, he has the facilities of a small government. He does. He does. And he, you know, you know he digs, all on his own. Yeah. Dig, digs a tunnel uh, if he wants to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and dude, if Italy can muster enough people and manpower to do that type of research, I'm certain he has, even if they're not talking about it. Um, there's somebody like high up or several somebody's more likely high up on those research teams that are into what they call the legend. That's the aerospace term for this shit. So they don't have to go around calling it what it is, which is UFOs, uh, you know, and, you know, and perhaps like look like an ass. Um, but, uh, yeah, dude, he has to know. He has to know more than he, than he like, dude, he's, like, dude, how is he going to work with Bigelow Aerospace? You know, and not know, especially with like uh, Robert Bigelow being so open about this. Yeah, and notice that that hasn't hurt him one bit. I heard that Robert Bigelow um, gave Bob Lazar some money. Is that is that true? I heard a rumor about that too, but like, who knows? Um, it could be like uh, I wonder. I'm certain he probably interviewed Lazar. Because Bigelow, you know, went around gathering information for many, many years, mm. and, and and 1988 was circa around the, you know, the heyday of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, and then, so, I'll um I'll ring Bob later and I'll ask him, <laughs> see if he's still got some of the money. Tell him hi. <laughs> yeah, but um, moving swiftly on from Mars um to more pressing matters. I just, I just wanted to get the Mars thing out of the way because everybody's talking about this Mars thing right now. But I feel like I need a little bit of piece of the pie. <laughs> well, Mars is popular. It is. It is. Indeed. And uh, if if I did go to Mars, I would open a pizza place. That's, I think, you know, oh. yeah. You'd be the best pizza place on Mars. Yeah, I, I, I would make a wicked pizza. That, you're a gold mine. that and I would have That's, to do battered Mars bars. Have you ever? Do you have that type of thing in the states? A battered Mars Mar bars. 
Y- yeah, but have you had a battered one? Oh, a fried one, yeah. We, we use Twinkies. Yeah. I mean, not that fried Twinkies. We, we fried Twinkies and Snicker bars. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, yeah. So, sounds great, though. It, it, in theory, it does. Maybe a battered pizza. That's next. <laughs> on, on Mars. <laughs> so, we was going to... you was. We was touching briefly on the new TTSA video earlier. Ah, yes. Basically, it's a, a confirmation of stuff we already know, but done in a very concise way. You know, uh, uh, I liked it. I would rather have it. There, they almost these little like clips that they that they're, they're putting out TTSA lately. They they seem to be like uh, addendums to uh, unidentified. And uh, it's a shame that that like that last one that they released yesterday, that would have been a nice little thing to attach at the end of the episode of, you know, uh, uh, of the season. While, I you know, that. Whilst talking about these other things. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I could have used I could have used more of that than say a very very brief synopsis of a little bit of what kind of happened at Rendlesham or yeah. something like you know I could have could have done without that. The the thing is that they get they keep. Dropping the words aerial threats, mm-hmm. and, and that just rings alarm bells with me. Aerial anything that when somebody says threat, I'm like that gets my well, back up a well, little this bit. Is the, well, this is the but that's once again this is military language. Uh, when somebody can come in and out willy nilly, that's a that's a threat. You know, even if that person, let's say that person breaks into your lab every night to uh, tidy everything up. And actually, you know, you know, erase the chalkboard, but to you know, put up equations that furthers your research farther than you were going to get it. That person would still be considered a threat, even though they were very useful, you know, and beneficial. Um, these guys are hawks. They're, they're they're trained to think like this, uh, and they keep us safe for the most part. Um, you know, now within that, can there be corruption? Can there be issues? Sure. Um, and the problem is, is we don't know enough about what they know for us to really, you know, make that assessment completely. Mm. You know, like I, do I believe that the extraterrestrials are a threat? No, like that on extent, like honestly, uh, we've had very, very few, uh, 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 actual uh, stories of out and out attacks from yeah. them, you know, considering, you know, most of the alleged interactions, you know, and they tend to bring people back. Now there's weird shit. There's weird shit that, is starting to come out and DeLong also says that there's more weird shit where like yeah there's like you know it's not completely this benign thing you can't just you know you can't run and like you know it's not Santa you can't just like you know you know sit in his lap and give him a hug I'll be honest with you if they you know the rumors are true and they do do a lot of anal probing uh, I would consider them a threat Definitely, you know, oh, yeah, no, yeah. that's a threat and a half, exactly. But uh, in like my experience and from what I've heard, that seems to have been um, uh, that's a loaded stuff. I don't know if I should even bring that up just yet because that's a, a, a longer conversation we can have about mill labs. Okay. Mill labs is a whole other thing, and uh, we should talk about mill labs because uh, that's uh, I, I was just joking, but about it. like so they happen. Uh, and there was anal weird... probing. Pardon? There was probing. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't look like it was aliens. <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah, you can... some of this shit gets really weird. Um, uh, somebody, like said, said, somebody but... pretending to be an alien just to get That's away with probing. The That's the story, man. It's called the Mill Lab. Like now, th- that sounds utterly ridiculous. The problem is. As there's anecdotal evidence for it, and then you know, the long, the long actually, like if you read the books, he talks about this in it. So there's, there's a reason to like somebody, like, dude, like governments are weird and they do weird mischievous stuff, you know. And sometimes one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing, and um, ufology is no different. I mean, why would it be? Um, like, you know, like they, they, the military will tell you to, uh, you know, don't use, you know, the, or the government don't use drugs and then they're the ones shipping it in. Yeah. You know, they'll do like these weird, 
you know, uh, they'll tell you, like, you know, they'll tell you to do one thing when they're doing another, you know, and because it serves some type of odd purpose or they've deemed it necessary. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, it, 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 and the thing is, UFOs have been used as a cover for a lot of weird shit. Uh, and this would be no different. Also, like, I, I think that, uh, I'll tell you, at some point we'll talk about this and then I'll I'll present, like, you know, what's out there and then, like, uh, some, and I'll give some analysis as to what I think the causes could be. But, like, right now we don't have time for, like, a long, detailed uh, look into this, though it is fascinating, you know, and it is, and it's as bizarre as it sounds, it is worth, you know, more than just a a glancing glance. Um, This is one of the weird parts of ufology that uh, also doesn't go away. So we'll look into probing later. Yeah, but it's not, uh, it's probably not who you think it is. I mean, honestly, it makes no sense. Why are you going to come over here uh, 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 like millions of light years away, you know, to do that? It's not Stephen Gray doing the probing, is it? No, 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 no. That's <laughs> why <laughs> he wishes. Uh, <laughs> well, he's a doctor. But, yeah. I guess he can excuse. Uh, Sorry, Stephen, if you're watching. I love you. To be yeah, I love you. Where's the man? He is. He, Greer is um, definitely stepping up the game at the moment. He's, oh, my he, goodness. Yeah, dude. Like, Steve, like, you know what? It was looking like, you know, things were passing Stephen by for a bit. And then Stephen came back. He, um, those documents that came out about that uh, uh, that briefing, you know, started showing up. And, you know, and, and more of these papers showing that, yeah, Stephen Greer was at these meetings. Stephen Greer did sign the guest book. He's a bit like Rocky, isn't he? Stephen Greer's a bit like Rocky Balboa. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Stephen Greer plays things like Stephen Greer plays things, and I don't necessarily agree with him uh, and everything he says, but uh, I'm sure he has his reasons for it. And uh, he is who he claims. Like, he was there. He was at these uh, uh, functions. Um, This has been verified. Um... You know, like, in, like, and it turns out, like, these stories he would tell us, like, yeah, he was at the ring. Ozzy, put me on hold. Hello? Yeah, it's a, you're back, you're back. I, I went on hold for a second, but you're back. That was weird. Okay, yeah. But, it was like, the aliens. You know, he was at the uh, Rockefeller Ranch with Hillary and, and uh, these, these major power players. You know, getting what, the, Stephen Green was at Rockefeller Ranch with Hillary Clinton. Yes, he was. Oh. Yeah, dude, he like those stories are true. He he went to those things, and he did. And, and honestly, he was there presenting. It wasn't just like you know, like the other people were there as well. Um, they alluded that uh, John Mack was there, which I, I tend to believe. Um, like honestly, I'd invite him if I was doing a. a it's 1990, and I'm doing a UFO symposium with like the best people. He would be there. Do you ever get suspicious of it all, though? Because, I mean, I mean, really, like, conspiracy suspicious. Because I saw Stephen Greer on, um, what's that dickhead's name? Logan Paul. <laughs> oh, my God, that was hilarious. Yeah, I that mean. Hilarious. Poor Stephen. <laughs> he, he got absolutely made a mock of. I felt a bit sorry for him. You know, I mean. Yeah, but that's like that's that you went to see Logan Paul. He's not there to uh and that's what he does. I mean, dude, if you're gonna be Ron Weird Al Yankovic and you're a songwriter, expect him to write parodies. You can't do I had no idea Weird Al was gonna, you know, turn my song into some joke about food. And yes you did. Like that's what he does. I was I, I was literally I, I could not believe my eyes. I'm watching this and thinking what are you doing, Stephen? No. Why have you done that? Why? He, he took the advice, and it's an honestly, dude. I I wish it was me instead of him because I could have stood up. I think better than he did. Like he's 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 on that new agey prophety like ego trip, Jedo. To know, be like, fair, uh, it's, it's probably done him some good. <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah, got, no, it's got him I mean, a younger also, audience. I mean, like Billy Meyer, all these guys. It's like you know, meet real aliens, start a cult. Yeah, uh, you know, like this is how things have gone um, for a long time. I think ufology uh, 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 benefits from more humility and a more down-to-earth approach 
in dealing with that, you know, but that's just me, you know. Um, yeah, he's um, poor Stephen. He'll get back up again. He always does. Yeah, no, that that wasn't a misstep. That was like a, a step, a sidestep. He was just you know, like, he was just trying to get down with the kids a little bit, wasn't he? Yeah, but it was the wrong kids to get in on mm, that type of thing. Like you know, like you needed somebody with. Now that's who Tom DeLong needed to go speak to. What, what Logan Paul? Yeah, I think Tom would have been like, dude. He he, dude, he knows how to handle guys like that. Tom like, is sort yeah. of like a guy like that. Yeah, he probably, you know. Pull his pants down. I mean, Stephen, Stephen really wants to meditate and, and 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 be evolved and stuff. That was more like you know somebody that you can hang out with. And a lot of like the, the better you follow, just are are are, are are stuffed shirts or you know a bit too nerdy or they're you know too much into spirituality, which you know how I feel about that. I, I see that as like uh, as, a, as a as a big like wrong turn that we've taken. But uh, like I said, but that's what you do when you don't have real answers. You you, you create your own belief system based on your questions. Yeah, well, Steve wants to talk to aliens. He can do it in his sleep or med- yeah. meditation or whatever. Yeah, I I'd still rather see them in broad daylight, like <laughs> out in the open. I physically. do. I... No, none of this. None of the shunning materialism. Fuck that. I want more. Mat- the ufology's only gotten better because of materialism, as in metamaterialism. Yeah. As <laughs> much as you can. Um, I'd, I'd rather. Uh, I, I love that we're we're like we're like surrounded with evidence, physical evidence. You know, I, I'd ra- I would take a little bit of physical evidence over all of the most accurate anecdotes in the world. I do think that there is something though with the power of thought. I'd- I don't know why. Oh, yeah, no. I, I just... there's, there, there's, there's definitely a connection to that. That's true. Uh, there, that's the thing. It's like uh, there, there, there's nuggets of truth in that as well. But like, uh, but it's still, it's still mostly garbage. It's still, like you know, and people make all these, you know, uh, 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 like assumptions and like, well, since I can visualize and I can make, you know, maybe uh, a quarter land on head more often than statistically normal, I'm going to now use that to uh, uh, become president of the United States. And it works. No. You know, like, I don't think there's a uh, a worn copy of uh, The Secret in Donald Trump's personal, you know, <laughs> uh, safe in the Oval Office. Try it. Oz, like Oz, what am I holding in my hand right now? Hmm. What am I holding what? it? What am I holding in my hand right now? Uh... I don't know. Uh, that shark. A, sh- a shark? The, the toy shark from the other day. Very close. Ah. <laughs> Doesn't work. Oh, Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay. If Osvaldo Franco can't do it, it does not work. That's not work. No. Sorry. You know, maybe I'm having an off day. <laughs> You've got pink socks on the wall, Oz. I, I know this. Yes, they're just dirty and they turn black. <laughs> no for use. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Stephen. Um, I need the proof. I need. I need to go. Stephen needs to pay for me to go sit on the beach with him so he can bring some UFOs up across the ocean. Then I'll yeah. believe him. Yeah. No, no. No. And that's the thing. You could. I. I. I think you can get into contact with certain things doing meditation. But it's not the same thing as being there for like an actual physical contact. And, I, and the idea that these like uh, uh, states of consciousness are a substitute for actual physical contact with like you know like we're at the level that we have, there's materials, there's photos of these people and these these devices, there's video of them. Like we're 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 in some like we're we're talking about a real physical phenomena now, and it's not something that just can be. You know, put and and like like I like it's it's we've outgrown this need for a counter religion to the religion that the secular religion that was tossed against ufology. We no longer need that. Uh, now we need to to really really turn ufology into a science and a political movement. You know, that's what we need to do: a hard science, 
uh, a, ref, uh, a refit and, and, and a political refit. You know, it's not just to prove these things. It's like, what what do we do with them? And what do we, you know, and, and, and what do we do with the people that, you know, kept this from us and why? And, you know, like it's a whole can of worms. And mythology needs to mature. It does. I agree. Totally. And, I, and, I, and, that's, and that's happening. It's happening. And there's a lot of people that are not going to be making that jump with us. But they need to be left behind. You know, I would love to take everybody can. Yeah, I, I do think there is a place for jokes in ufology, but uh, at the same oh, time... Oh, yeah, no, I'm constantly making jokes about UFOs. You need a sense of humor. You have to. I'm not saying that, uh, like, you know... In fact, if anything, like the, the, the spiritualists and the, 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 the nerdy types are too serious Yeah. about, you know? And, 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 then, like, and then they look at you badly if you make jokes about ufology, even though you're a ufologist. It's like, listen, this is not my religion. I'm not trying to get goody points with UFO God. You know, like yeah. it's, it, it, I don't believe that it works that way. Um, you know, like if, like, and, and they have these weird, like, beliefs. Like, I mean, like, if, if everybody that were, uh, that were an experiencer had to be this strict vegetarian who meditated all the time and, 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 and believed only in progressive ideals, then why is it that the militaries of the world have all the best stuff? Why is it the people that, yeah, the exact opposite? Now, that mentality, they actually have wreckage. They have huge chunks of the stuff and programs and things like that. That, like, you know, I've not seen Stephen produce one thing like that. No. Or anybody else like that. Um, for all the, the speeches and all the highfalutin ideas and ideals, you know. Mind you, the people that, that, that are dealing with these horrible military people are coming back with actual stuff. You know, like, how about that? I how feel like the, we're moving on to the meat and bones of this video now, Oz. Because this, um, this, this, this is um, what we were t we was talking about earlier. Yeah. Are, are you talk? Are you getting into the uh, the company? Oh yes. Well, there is. Uh, there's been a development, um, an exciting development. This is really really cool. Um, there have been discussions for a while that there are different groups of people that are doing similar research to, to the Stars Academy, and that those groups are remaining silent for now. Uh, however, one group has emerged. Um, there's a group that's doing some pretty interesting work called the Alcyon Project, um, and basically they've announced that they have found uh, another example of the... Uh, of metamaterials that they've been work, working with, and that this sample is actually more advanced than the one that TTSA is using. And they're saying this because they have a member of their team was uh, a scientist involved with researching uh, 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 one of these more advanced versions of these metamaterials. And yeah, they're they're UAP. Uh, uh, they're, they're from UAPs as well. Um, so, they, and not only that. Uh, apparently, uh, Hal Putoff has given them a nod. Like Hal Putoff has acknowledged Halcyon Project as a, as an actual like player in this. So like Halcyon Project does exist. So it doesn't and, see it uh, doesn't see it as competition, no. Uh, I, 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 sure. I, I, I mean, competition healthy competition. Supposed, yeah, they're supposed to be healthy for you. I mean, I, honestly, you UFOs are going to be like everything else. If you think. That you know, like you know, again, like, sorry hippies, but the UFO, when, if you think that the UFOs are going to land, everyone's going to come and sing kumbaya and, and dress in their 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 best robes and and and, and you know uh, 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 eat vegetables and blow kisses at the sky you know, all day. Uh, no, uh, there's going to be a, a very human reaction to this experience, and we're going to do all the things that humans do. You know, including start corporations and then do research and make devices out of these things. And those are the people that are probably going to make uh, uh, the biggest differences in our lives and compare it to this, you know. So this this company, how long have you known about this company? What they called, oh, uh, what, what's the name of them again? Uh, Halcyon. Halcyon. Yes. You like we'll see. You'll, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll send, you, send I'll me the send link. You'll see. Um, uh, about like two years or so, 
That's how long they've been on the scene in total, or they, what was they doing before? Yeah, but, uh, you know, and I've been in contact with somebody from there for quite some time. Um, and uh, well, basically this happened about maybe a week or two ago. Okay. Where this was like, formally announced. Um, and not a lot of, uh, like, response from the UFO uh, uh, world or UFO media, but... Uh, that's probably going to change. They're they're looking to do another document. They're doing a doc um, that's going to be like well, they'll see. They're trying to. Uh, they're still gathering data. They're doing more research. They're they're actually acquiring and right now a sample from a crash in the eighties. But this didn't happen in the United States. And um, they're uh, basically going about doing research in that they they have the ability to access laboratories. Um, so yeah, this is a very exciting development, and it makes sense if you have. At very rarely would you find just one company doing, you know, some type of research into something. If something is real, that means there's several different people, especially within tech, trying to do the same thing. It's like you know, uh, uh, there were several different computer companies that were in operation, you know, while Microsoft was getting started. Yeah. You know, and um, Microsoft just you know became the the, the leader, you know. Uh, and this is this is a technology matter. This is probably going to be, you know, again, it's going to be the same thing. We'll see what happens. Uh, um, you know, it, history will repeat itself, but this time with alien technology. Do you know how big the team is? Uh, no, not in specific. So it's it's probably going to be around about the same size size as TTSA, though, isn't it? Might say not that's growing. Well, perhaps it's got more, well. There's more than one person. I know that much. Okay. Yeah, you know, that I can confirm. Um, and do you know what this company did prior to this? Uh, no, I think uh, this, uh, to my knowledge, this is people that teamed up for this purpose. Okay, so what? Just like a, a group of maybe friends that spoke about this subject that oh yeah know uh, stuff about the subject that and not just friend. There's also a, a, again quite a few of them are experiencers, which is also true with like TTSA. Which is another thing. Um, another, well, one of the other aspects of like abductions that people don't talk about is that a lot of people that get um, have, a, have a, these encounters are scientists and engineers. Mm. Now, quite a few. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, you know, they just don't talk about it because it's like you know that's really like you know a painful subject to get into when you're you know in the sciences or technologies. So. You know, they keep their they keep their mouths shut, but not all the time. And uh, people seek each other out, and you know, well, good things luck. happen. Good luck to them. Are they asking for any investments yet, or anything like that? Not yet, but hey, who knows? It's still uh, 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 that could happen. Uh, I understand that a lot of people kind of have a problem with investing the company and this, that, and the other, but. For a company to survive, you know, even massive companies ask for investment. Yeah, no, no, no. This is part of this delusional, like, again, it, it, there's, 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 there's a lot of, like, magical thinking in ufology. And the reason why is because it was put there. Mm. And uh, we need to move away from that. You know, it, it's not, it's no longer up in the air. Wouldn't it be great if we did this? Wouldn't it be great? No, we, we actually have it. We got it. Now it's important to do something with it you know and uh i i think a lot of people really don't know what to do with it, especially within this like you know field a lot of people made their names off of this being an unknown you know as a perpetual unknown too like something that will not you know may not ever be answered for or at the very least not in your lifetime so you don't have to be responsible for anything you say or do in regards to it yeah turns this- up that, that longer true it was briefly so, so sp- speaking of like other people branching out into doing this so i mentioned earlier to yourself um billy carlson from i've forgotten his, the name of his company something mines or whatever uh he's oh, mentioned oh it's something like that yeah he he's talking about going into space uh, and creating... Oh, no, that's not Open Minds, no. That's something else. No, no, it's not. I forgot. It's something like Minds. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, there's him. There's also um, Alien Scientist has got a team together now. Do you know the guy that hates Bob Lazar 
Um, he's got. Oh, a... Yes, that's. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, 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 I disagree with. I, Alien Scientist is awesome. Jamie yes, is great. Is, is, uh, is I disagree a... with him uh, with this Bob Lazar thing, and I honestly, I don't, I don't think it's going to work out that great for him. I think he needs to back off from this. Well, he's, I think he has kind of a little bit. As he's he's calmed down a bit. I mean, his last year he went through this period yeah. where he was like really going in hard on Bob. Yeah, no, 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 no. He he hates Bob Lazar. Like it's like like the coyote and the roadrunner. Yeah, I mean, apparently where it all spurs from, you know, he absolutely loved Bob Lazar to start off with, and then something happened, and he's like, no, nah, I can't stand him. I can't stand yeah. him, you know, and it's like it's like a passion that you can see the hatred. It is a passion, oh, yeah. but he, now he's now going out with his his team, and he wants to um, prove anti gravity how it works. And the yeah, Hover Brothers, yeah, yeah, you know, and I, good luck to them. Uh, I just oh the, yeah, absolutely. the Bob you Lazar know, thing is like wow, a lot of hatred you know, I there. Just, you know, I, I like uh, Jeremy's awesome. Um, Jeremy is a credit to ufology. Yeah, he's just um, a great work. I'm subscribed to the guy. I've been subscribed for years, way yeah. before um, I had Jeremy's my channel. Um, I, I just I, I disagree with him on, on this, and I think that the uh, I think the course, like honestly, uh, like Jack Vallee wrote the forward of the book that Tom DeLonge is publishing about uh, about Bob Lazar's life. Mm. Um, at this point at this stage in the game that says a whole lot you know um, the, the the official players are, are, are coming together and they're basically co-signing this so uh, whatever even if there is some type of weirdness going on behind it um, this is what's being presented um, and uh, I, I I believe all of that is also for a specific reason. Like I mean, we're getting all of this stuff from TTSA and the Department of Defense, and then all of a sudden Bob Lazar comes out with proof. You know, after not wanting to talk to anybody for decades, you know, just so happy he just comes back out of the ether. Do you, you know? think he has some of that element one fifteen? Oh yeah, he said he did. There's like. You go to the older videos, the old interviews that he did, he said he had it. Now he's backtracking off of it. Uh, uh, and, and then there's that video of the, of the, uh, the lasers uh, being shot in and around a, a, what's supposed to be a piece of a 115. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has it or something like it. We've mentioned this before, though. So something that m may back up um, Jeremy's claims with Bob. Not that I... I like Bob, but there's no mention of metamaterials at all. No, there there, there isn't. But uh, there is now. Well, we don't know. We, we there might be more. Um, uh, like Lazar does say, uh, uh, talk about how uh, they had material science issues, and um, he said some very interesting things. Like they uh, would like say take this stuff out every 20 years to see if they could figure out how it worked. And usually they'd come up with bupkis. And then uh, something happened in the 80s. They, they were doing a joint venture with the Russians. And then something happened and then the Russians weren't allowed in the facility anymore. Mm. Which they, and he said it's because we found something really, really awesome. But he, uh, I don't know if he knows what that is, though. Like, I think he even said that they, he wasn't told what it was. But like, so there was a major development and you know, and then they weren't invited back. I don't think we'll ever find out. I think we'll find out more than we won't find out everything, but we'll find out some very interesting things. I don't um, think we'll find out if any of these people, like Bob, is a hundred percent legit anytime soon. I, I just don't see it coming out. I don't see that. I don't see the the one hundred percent proof coming out. I don't know, man. I think uh, we're five years away from uh, anti-gravity and stuff like that, and people start writing around in disc-shaped objects. Um, Listen, I'm 90%, okay. I believe the guy, but there's that 10% of, of me that doesn't believe. There's 10% there's 
of me that thinks that you're, um, you know, a, a shill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm just shitting you, man. That's fine, dude. I, but, I but wish you I could was be. a shill. You could be. medical benefits. I, I could be. <laughs> I'm sure, man. How much does the CIA pay you? Shit. <laughs> there are no aliens. There are none. Just demons. Yeah, there's demons. There's demons. I, well, I look, swear. At, look at them. See? It looks like a demon. You just put a pair of horns on it. Yeah. Look at that. Have you ever seen this bottle of vodka? I still haven't drunk this oh, bottle. Yeah. Tony. No, we have. Tony we have said, a subscriber sent me this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to drink it, but I need to... I need the right moment, and I need to have just a little bit because I've, I'm kind of I'm I'm taking the 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 drunken videos out of the equation because they don't do very well. I'm, I may have a second channel where I just do live streams and just be myself. <laughs> now I'll see you there. Yeah. No, I'm get I'm getting old as well. I you know I have to, I, I can't drink like I used to do. So you know it's just a cup just a couple for me now. I've got, I've got no, kids, you don't want to get you don't want to get smashed too much. I've got kids to look after. I can't be, that too. I, yes, I can't, I can't have hangover the next day. <laughs> so yeah, um, what was the the other thing you wanted to bring up? Oh well, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like, all right, um, remember how we were talking about how uh, uh, like there like uh, unidentified wasn't like it was okay. You know, it, it for was the most part, it, it for was the people it. in the community. Yeah. Well, um, they Discovery Channel produced a show. It's called Contact. And they didn't really talk a lot about it, and they just kind of sort of threw it on television. And it's phenomenal. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, like I said before, it's on the Discovery Channel, um, and uh, there are two episodes in, and they. Uh, this is a fantastic show. Uh, in the first episode, uh, they used some software they got from the CIA and some information about uh, some earthquakes. And they triangulated this earthquake activity with UFO activity in the same spot in, in, in Mexico. And they went down and they sent teams to the spot in Mexico. And they basically found this weird cave like uh, system it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It has sideways stalactites, like stalactites coming out yeah, of yeah. you know, and you know the side which out the walls. Happen. They're either pointing down or they're pointing up. Um, but not even just that, they went and they found samples of something called sky jelly. Now oh, this, this is yes. important. This is one of these things that you know about. If you're a UFO researcher, and a good one, uh, and it's not all that common, but it it, it exists and it and it has a long-standing history. Um, uh, uh, well, basically, for hundreds of years, and this goes back for very, like like and I don't mean like ancient times. I mean like you know like you know uh, uh, stuff that is verifiable by modern society. Like, you know, you go back to a seven, like a, uh, uh, an almanac in the 1700s or something, or the 1600s, and uh, they would talk about uh, these weird things uh, coming out of the sky, and, and um, they would explode and or something, and then they would uh, go to that area, and the area was covered in this weird whitish-gray gel. And the, the gel would be everywhere over a, a long, like, stretch of area, and uh, basically, the, this gel would uh, eventually, over time, it would evaporate, or if it would rain, uh, it would just dissipate in the rain. And the people that got into physical contact with this uh, gel uh, would get sick. Like people would start getting flu-like symptoms, and um, it would always be accompanied by, like I said, some type of weird, like UFO sighting, or what we would call a UFO sighting now, or um, a, a meteor shower. Um, and the thing is, this has happened in spots all over the world, and uh, people have actually, even in modern day, have actually gotten samples of this stuff. And um, the weird part is, is that uh, there's also stories of the military freaking out when this stuff shows up, and cordoning off the area and trying to get all of that as well. In fact, there were samples that were sent to an American university, 
and the military actually like it turns out if you find this stuff uh, uh, don't touch it gather it up put it in a plastic container and if you put it in the freezer it doesn't evaporate like and my vodka. People have, yeah and people have gotten samples to universities and the military comes in and takes the university samples it's like a it's like a, a weird microbiology version of uh, the X Files. Say so what? It will like, not freeze. Hmm? It will not freeze. No, 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 it'll freeze, but it won't evaporate. Oh, oh got the, you. Left on its own, it evaporates, or rainwater will wash it away. So if you keep it you know? cool, yeah, it, it'll remain in. Uh, uh, put it in a plastic container uh, or a pl- uh, or a glass jar, something. Does it freeze sure though? Cut? Does it freeze or does it just stay? No, it, it freezes. It right. freezes, but it remains uh, cohesive as well. Right. Um, they've done uh, tests on it. Um, it's biological, but with no DNA. Oh. Yeah. Put that in your pipe and smoke. It's biological. But it's got no, no DNA. DNA. Pardon? But it's got no DNA. No DNA. And they've tried everything to explain it away. If you look at the old almanacs, they would say, like, oh, these are frogs' eggs, even though there's no frogs producing that much egg. You know, uh, um, they used to say that uh, it was something that birds would cough up, <laughs> like some type of work, like like uh, 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 the vomit equivalent of bird poop. But no, that's not, you know. And, 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 and these stories go back hundreds of years. You know, and and it's always like you know we saw something weird in the sky. But stop me if and I'm was, stop me if I'm wrong. If it's come from anything, if it's come from any like living creature, it would have some sort of trace of DNA. Or some could be like I don't know. Like it could be, uh, you know, we've seen uh, there are stories of UFOs like uh, at times like you know sucking up water, you know, for whatever reason. So for some reason they needed water and they decided they could get it from Earth and they would use it. Perhaps this is. Uh, some type, you know how planes drop waste? Yeah. You know, perhaps this is a mishap that happens. There's also another uh, interesting theory that uh, some UFOs might actually be biodegradable. And that this is somehow some type of, you no, know, some type of weird material that, like, you know, I guess maybe acts like a metal in certain cases, then turns into a gel. So once it's done then, its job, get rid of the yeah. evidence. Exactly, or like yeah. So that way you don't contaminate the uh, the the primitive civilization that maybe you were, you know, um, sent there to visit. But you know, and apparently that's not how it happens all the time because um, there's quite often that we we have like actual metal discs crashing, and we got pieces of that too. So what's your theory behind it? You must have a thought. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 my theory is that it's very very interesting. Uh, my theory is that it's a very important part of this. Um, now this is the thing dealing with like material, like these guys are on some, on, uh, their materials are amazing. Absolutely stunning. Uh, uh, extraordinary stuff. Uh, I can't say that it's not possible for these things to maybe turn into like some type of biological, you know, uh, uh, waste mechanism, especially to like, you know, to hide stuff. And it's a great way to hide it. You know, yeah. That's a great, like, you know, like, like, I mean, I mean, we have dissolving guns for the very same reason. You know, like they're the domain of espionage organizations, you know, but they have guns where you can shoot somebody and just drop it in a fountain or, or in a puddle or in a storm drain. And then that thing just disappears. You know, there's Crazy. nothing to be found. Crazy. Yeah. So maybe that's that. But, you know, one that you're right in. So this is contact. Yes. It's on the Discovery Channel. I'm going to be sending. Uh, yeah, send me some links. Some links. Uh, there's two episodes of the third one tonight. Um, I'll be all I, over. Uh, I don't know if everybody uh, that's not in the U.S. can see it, but if you use a VPN, you should be able to do it. So you know, you uh, you'll be able to check it out as well. And I strongly suggest that you do. The first two episodes were fantastic, but you got to watch them in order. They're not like they're 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 meant to be seen. Like the the, the second episode picks up with the last one left off, and the, the same seems to be true with the third episode coming. I have to watch them in order anyway. It's, it's like a, any program, yeah. even if it doesn't follow on, I have to kind of watch it in order. I'm just like that. Yeah, because th- this is just like, uh, investigative-wise, this is really well done. Um, 
They're doing a fantastic job on that show so far. Who's Fingers doing crossed. it? Who's doing it? I know it's, you said the Discovery Channel, but who's presenting it? Um, people like non-ufologists, like like professional investigators, which is actually kind of refreshing. These are real investigators that are finding these things. It's also like uh, a lot of these guys are also former like military guys. Right. You know, uh, there's a woman uh, that's on their team, and uh, she's a journalist, but it turns out she's actually really an astrophysicist that does journalism. So, yeah, no, that's, a, you know, uh, that's awesome. Multitask. That's who we need, you know. So, you mentioned uh, my, one of my favorite little subjects, the, the bet sphere. Oh, yeah, okay, so check this out. Man, I've been looking for the bet sphere for years. Found nothing about the bet sphere until about a year ago. Then, you know, after decades, you know, they just started coming back up in conversation for whatever reasons. There is a man in Texas that is not related to the Betts family, and uh, he has 12 of them. Right? Yeah. 12? He has 12, 12, and they work. They're doing the stuff that... They, 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 all, the star, all the stories from the 70s uh, that, of these weird things that the Betts sphere used to do, He's got video of it from his bet spheres in uh, Texas. Wow. Yes. See, so uh, where, where, where I do I find this? Hmm? Where do I find this video footage? Uh, I'll send it to you. And is it copyrighted? Uh, pardon? And is it copyrighted? No, I, I don't think so. We'll see. Hopefully you'll get a shot. I hope you can use it. Um, but yeah, dude, like, they, and apparently... I spoke with him a bit on YouTube, and he said that... Oh, you that, spoke with the uh, guy? The guy who's got the 12 of them? Yes. I reached out. Okay. Um, I do that. I'll go and ask somebody. Uh, like, why not? Um, and basically, uh, the story is is that there was... Uh, there were these people in their ranch. Uh, got to own a ranch, apparently. They have the really good... All this stuff crazy happened. stuff happens on the ranch. Yeah, I, I, dude, I win a lottery, I'm buying a ranch. <laughs> I have to buy a ranch. Uh, but, um, I, I'm, I'm leaving so my wife, I'm leaving my kids, I'm leaving England, uh, and I'll, I'm going to lodge with you. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's right. You can bring them, it's a big ranch. I, you know. No. <laughs> I need to look for an excuse. Too much trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, so basically he was saying that there was a UFO hovering over their uh, property low, you know, and uh, basically the family that was there was like, you know, these are regular people, RDBs, you know, living their life, and then, you know, this superimposes itself on their existence, and basically there was this big disc, it was a disc, and it was like hovering close to the ground, the people were freaking out, the disc departs, and then where the disc was, they got 12 spheres. And they look exactly like the bet sphere. Some, though, are bigger than others. Okay, so how has he managed to keep hold of these? You know, if, he's, mean, if uh, he's talking about having these, surely, I mean, what, what was it? The Navy took the bet sphere. They took it, didn't they? And then they, repla oh, yeah, they replaced was... it, and it was never the same. Just to quickly touch, though, Oz, um, mm -hmm. for the people that are not aware... Can we briefly go into what the ball actually did? Oh, yeah. So, basically, there's this family. Um, this is decades ago in the United States. They find uh, the Betts family, and they find this sphere in the middle of a fire. There's a fire on their property. Nobody ever resolved where the fire came from or how it got started, but there was a fire. And then and there's this weird piece of metal in the middle, of, center of it. Um, the teenage son grabs the sphere and takes it into his room. You know, just to see what, you know, what it does. And basically, uh, he's strumming on his guitars like teenagers do. And uh, the sphere started to move. And would start to react and do all these weird, like rolling around the floor and um, doing these really, really odd things that there is no reason for it to do. Um, there's video footage now of th this other guy's spheres doing the same stuff. Like, like you can, like, it's no longer an anecdotal story. You know, um, like we, we have 
I'm telling you, man, ufology is getting great. Uh, we have footage of this. But um, do you think it's possible that this guy could be, uh, you know, lying? Pardon? Do you think it's possible that this guy is lying? That, he, that he's not I, telling the truth and that uh, it's a hoax? It's, it's an odd lie to tell. And almost nobody knows about this still. We well, might be trying uh, to get. Well, it's, it's an odd, it's an odd lie. But you know how much, how much money did the guys make from the that Skinwalkers Ranch? None really. Uh, the family that, um, how the family that, that that owned the ranch initially had to sell it to Bigelow because they were going under. Like you know, I, and they, how much dude, did honestly, he buy it for? I've, I've not seen anybody get rich coming from ufology i've seen rich people come into ufology that speaks about it though you've not seen anybody yeah. that get rich that speaks about it so if 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 i wanted to pull off a big hoax and i wanted to make some money off it and i make the money i ain't going to speak about making that money because i may want to return back to that hoax at some point to get some more money i'm not saying this is the case i i always well, think no, it's not like it's not like you know uh, um, I need to get like, this you know, guy you're on. Charging people five bucks to hold it or take a picture with it or something. What's his channel's like name? What's his? What's the, oh. do, you know, do you know what his channel's called? Uh, no, it's just a regular a channel. Uh, it's, it's under the, the gentleman's name. Okay, I need, I, you need to send me a link. I need to get this guy. Yeah, I'll guy. send you everything. I need to get him on. I didn't need it. I need him to. Actually, sh- actually, I need I him before, to show. I think it got lost with the uh, stuff I sent already. Yeah, I want to see his balls. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what his balls can do. Um, They're amazing balls. Yeah, yeah. are they big balls or how, how big? Is, Huge. How, he's got biggest big... balls of them all. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, I'm not, not going to come back from that. Now, is, on a serious note, how big are these balls? Um, some of the size of uh, um, the bed sphere, the original one. So, and I think like two of them are like like enormous, like like. Like medicine balls, like, right? Okay, but well, you like, sit on them. Yeah, but they're like the same configuration but larger. And it, it, is the up close pictures of them? Like, I see. Yeah, the color, like it's like digital video. And they completely like, smooth. Uh yeah, this, this, they're like these are odd. Sh- these are odd for uh for for human shaped shit. I need to see this. Yes, you do. I sent it to you, but I'll send it again. You, uh, Oz, I apologize if you've already sent me the, the link to that. No, and I've sent you all these. You also have the uh, the stuff from Halcyon Pride. All those things are yes, in yes. here. you got to check. I sent them to you first. I do. When when you Whenever I'm on break, which is usually about half an hour, I try to watch as much as I can. I watched the TCSA one. Yeah, that was good. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, dude. Like this, ufology is amazing. Ufology is an amazing subject. And, uh, again, it's getting better and better. Yeah, it's but, get, it's starting to become now something that's becoming very um, youthful as well. Yes, you know, yes, exactly. Thank God. Uh, but also uh, going back to uh, sticking on the bed sphere. I mean, are they, these new spheres? Uh, TCSA has been uh, advised. That these are in existence, and uh, he's currently in talks with them to uh, uh, do research on those uh, on the spheres. Oh, so so the so the right. Well, that changes everything. If you'd have told, if you'd have said that, that definitely changes everything. Because yeah. if it's a hoax, then surely once they go and check out his balls, and real, they're going to realize straight away he's got fake balls. If he's convinced that these are legit, you're not gonna. He's not going to ring them up saying. You know, especially yeah. with, with Lou, you know, you won't, you won't fuck. Yeah, no, him. like I'm sorry. Yeah, you're not. If you're some like like shysty little scammer, you're not smarter than Hal put off. Yeah, you're not smarter than you know, uh, or or like you know, or somebody like uh, uh, Lozano is probably going to pick up a vibe on your. Yeah, that, that was that, I was, that was going to say if you know if, if you've lied, and and Lou turns up at your door and he realizes you know he's he's a big guy. He's if he's had a wasted yeah, he, journey. I, yeah, he can cripple you with his bare hands. Exactly. You don't need a weapon. He can make it look like a mis- uh, an accident. <laughs> so that is interesting. So so they're, they're going to get hold of these balls. 
Well, yeah, well, they're, they're they're still in talks, but basically, like they we'll uh, call them spheres. They're on the radar. Spheres. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop saying balls because I keep having a little chuckle to myself. It's quite childish. As long as you don't call them orbs. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that term has been done to death. Like we're, just, we're keeping spheres. Do you know when you said that they broke out and they it left these spheres? That reminds yeah. that reminds me of you know the TV series Taken Steven Spielberg's Taken when the 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 UFO um, well the spaceship because it's it is it's not unidentified it's definitely there um, the spaceship actually uh, breaks off into three three spheres and flies mm-hmm. off in different directions but it is one. You've seen mm. you've seen the you've seen oh the... yeah of course of course I've been several times yeah yeah it reminds me of that with these mm. maybe 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 they're maybe they are the ship yeah well that, that's a possibility I mean like we have uh, well the United States has uh, plans for uh, fighter jets that break up into smaller fighter yeah. jets and then re you know. Can come back together, all the like Voltron or Power Rangers, you know. Uh, it is crazy. Yeah, so that, like, honestly, it would not be like I, I tend to believe that our drone program is based off of their drone program. So I would not be surprised if we're that's our, like, you know, uh, our, our our little you know pathetic attempt at you know trying to mimic some of the you know design capabilities of uh, some of those craft. It would not be the the first or the last time. Uh, for that, uh, so that's totally. Uh, uh, I, I totally think that that's a that is a possibility. Though I I tend to think that uh, when you see UFOs breaking up into a bunch of pieces scattering everywhere, I, I my and this is from my physics background. I'm wondering if perhaps that's not some type of gravitational lensing. Yeah. Like like an optical illusion that happens because you're bending, you know, Time gravity space, perhaps yeah. in a certain way. So, like, the light bends in all these weird directions. I think that's more likely than that the makes ship breaks more... apart and turns into other things. However, that makes like, more sense. It yes, however, more sense. when you're dealing with that type, again, we don't know. And when you're dealing with people with those types of physical capabilities, like, who are you to say that that, you know, what's beyond their ability to do? Did he say how much these spheres weighed? No, we didn't get into it like that. Not, not. Uh, a lot of detail. It's little like, things uh, like that that really interest me. You know, like uh, what sort of texture they are. You know, how much. The, oh how yeah, much... no, the whole thing. Yeah, no, all of that is absolutely important. Uh, uh, that's how you like, you know, can de- uh, detect certain things. In fact, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, speaking of which, because I, I, uh, hopefully you guys saw uh, the phenomenon or the clip that we had of the phenomenon that it's we gone. The, cl- the it's gone now. The, yeah, the so link that we that... that we left is gone. Um, yeah, we we told everybody you had to go immediately because we didn't know how long that was going to be up after we started talking about it. And sure enough, uh, they took it down. But uh, I ended up tracking down some more information about the uh, the metal fragments that are going to be shown in the uh, documentary. Um, like, where did they get them from? Like, the, specifically the ones in the tubes that like. Um, that actually you can see in the uh, in the last episode of Alien Attic. We, we have an image of those up, um, and basically, uh, and this is an, a, 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 and it's wonderful too because, like, it, all right, it turns out that these samples come from a UFO explosion over a, a place called Ubatuba, San Pablo, Brazil, in 1957. And basically, this UFO crash is another situation where it, 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 it seemed to like almost like bounce off of a lake, like a uh, skimming stone. Up. Yeah, and then it, like it kind of tried to skid off, and then it exploded. And uh, they said that most of the materials landed in the water, but there was stuff covering the beach, and they got like lots of it, and not just one person. There's like people in that area; their families have like tons of it. Right, and these like like oh, they're all shards and stuff, but they're it's there. Uh, well, anyway, um, that and that's where the, whomever these people are that are going to be discussed in uh, the phenomena, um, that's where they got uh, at least some of their samples are from this. And so I went and I dug around to find out if there was any 
stories about a UFO exploding and materials being found in Ubatuba, San Pablo, Brazil in 1957. And sure enough, yeah, found it. Uh, in fact, I found a detailed analysis for the attempts of them doing the analysis, you know, with, you know, the technology of the time. And uh, they even have photos of these uh, these pieces, and boom, it's the same stuff. Um, the same way that they describe it, uh, the physical characteristics, how it's super light but it's metal. Um, you know, this is this is the same stuff that you know um, people are getting. Like you know, we know that uh, the recent stuff that DeLong has been posting is from arts parts. You know, Art Bell's uh, yeah. stuff, and they uh, they got a lot of that from uh, Linda Howe. Uh, who has uh, some of it. Um, but this is from yet another, you know, crash, but it's the same stuff. Mm. Or similar, you know, like it's, it's you know, uh, a piece of a Ford or a piece of a Chrysler, you know, still going to be made out of similar materials. So they, when, they've, when they've analyzed it, they've said that it is metamaterials. Well, that's, no, they, they, the analysis... That I have is from 1957. They right. I don't know what okay. material is. All the cursory stuff, though. Yeah, this is super pure, and it's like you know, like there's got these other odd characteristics. Those are all in there. Um, you know, like I know a little bit more about it than they do, but only because I live in the year 2018. I mean, again, you know, like it's, uh, you know, it's been quite some time since then. Because I, but, I, I had a, th- I had a theory on. UFOs um, or spaceships when they crash, um, if they're made out of these metamaterials, could they to maybe pre- prevent um, us humans from finding out exactly how they work or finding a full craft that's broken a little bit, break into little pieces? Could the metamaterials actually, on an impact, Part themselves, they, they disintegrate. They fall yeah. apart. Yeah, and they fall apart. It, it, well, no, it makes sense because honestly, dude, but like you talk about Roswell. What did they? What's the first thing that happens when somebody came across Roswell? There was this strewn field. It was all filled with these tiny bits of, of metal, and then there were some larger fragments way off in the distance, and then there was like bodies. You know, um, again, uh, Uba Tuba, pieces are scattered everywhere. You know, um, this is uh, this is basically uh, uh, pretty common for a UFO crash. Sometimes there's like you know a disc sticking out the ground. You know, in other situations, but uh, yeah, and in fact, like honestly, it could also be again. Perhaps these things are are biodegradable, and I mean, like in the sense that they can like break up into small pieces. And honestly, uh, that's a that's usually a good enough like hiding place. You know, when you're dealing with most human beings. Yeah. It's just like these small and possibly, you know, weird little pieces of metal nobody can really do anything about, you know. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you go to uh, deep into ufology, uh, you, you've you heard of the Aurora incident, the UFO crash yeah. in Aurora, Texas in the 1800s. Yes. That too, strewn field. You know, little bits of stuff everywhere. Tiny. Yeah. So... Maybe because if the, if one can if one hits and it doesn't break apart, but another one hits and it totally breaks apart into tiny tiny pieces, maybe it's different crafts, different species. Oh yes, oh sure, dude. There could be one's like, more advanced than the other there, one. There could be there could be ones that are specifically designed to be easily easy to to, to disintegrate. You know, so that you don't, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, pollute uh, humanity's culture with theirs, you know, so to speak, or, or, you know, or give us a bit too much. However, there could be instances where uh, one of their regular everyday crash, that craft that they use, you know, has an incident and is found intact, you know, or relatively intact, you know, which is also, you know, something that has been discussed. Yeah. You know, and according to Bob Lazar, like a lot of their secrets of the extraterrestrials were, were were pretty well kept secrets until we started making breakthroughs with electron microscopes. Like we did not know how these things worked. Like like I said, the the Urubutu, uh, uh, research does not mention metamaterials as they weren't a concept. 
Yeah, I mean, that could explain the, that, the fact that Bob's never really said anything about metamaterials because it wasn't it wasn't a thing. Mm, say that again? I said that could, could be the exact reason why I keep saying why Bob Lazar has never mentioned anything about metamaterials because with the research he was doing... It's not propulsion-based. Yeah, it was probably... Well, that's the thing. No, he, he has said... Uh, Recently, he has said like certain. He's made anecdotal like suggestions that yes, this is an issue with it. Um, at the same time, though, like you know, maybe he didn't bring it up in 1988 because it made no sense. Because again, we didn't have metamaterials in 1988. You know, and, and oddly enough, uh, Bob Lazar was involved in the creation of aerogels. Yeah, we were talking about also, that. Yeah, and also a, a material breakthrough. Uh, I would, I would love to ask Bob. You know specifically about that because we 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 know because uh, uh, Corbell did a a, 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 a video of, of uh, Bob Lazar's analysis of the uh, of the uh, the uh, uh, disc UFO uh, f- uh, video released from uh, the DOD and then he explains like how like you know the ship works um, and so forth. Uh, you know, I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking that like it, it's probably worth a try to ask Bob Lazar about this in, in more detail. And I, I've yet to hear anybody ask him about metamaterials, you know, in specific. I've I've never heard anybody asking that. Never. Yeah, like I I think he's doing a Q and A soon. Like I would love to be able to like get that question on the Q and A. And I and I would love to get that video footage. Hmm. I'll sc- you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that that would be... It would be interesting to hear his his actual thoughts on uh, metamaterials. And I would like to... I'd like to, I'd like to actually see an interview where he speaks about to the Stars Academy and what he thinks of their company. Because Tom DeLong, like we said before, Tom's publishing his book. Um, so, yeah. So, so Bob must... He must know quite a bit about the company, but Bob also says he's not really interested in UFOs. Well, that's what he said in the documentary. Yeah. Well, you know, like... They've ruined his life. Well, yeah. You know, I don't even know if he... Like, that's probably a statement that he says. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe he doesn't keep up with UFOs like that, but there's no way he's not interested, especially when he knows they exist. It's one thing to say that you don't like. You know, I know people that don't like, that were not into UFOs till they were convinced. Yeah. But you know, but but then like, like, you know, you're into UFOs from then on. You know, that's just it. Even if you have doubts, you go back and forth. You're in it. You know, and and, and even when you get tired of it, you know, and you think there's, you know, you're done with it. You're just one critical breakthrough away from coming right back. Though he did backtrack on that, and he did say that he regretted ever coming out about it because he'd be still working on it now. Oh yeah, no, I would. If given the opportunity, same here. I wouldn't be a whistleblower. No, I would be doing my job, you know, at the facility, happy to have that position. Would you? You know, I can. What if you came across those something that could potentially be dangerous to the human race? No, you, st- that, you still wouldn't blow that whistle. Still, that that thing will still exist. I say it or doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know, suppose you, I suppose you'd want to stick about to find stick around to find out if there's a way you can pre- prevent or. Oh yeah, and honestly, dude, if anything, TTSA has shown us is that a change from within is the best way to go. Yeah. You know, as usual, you know, uh, you know, even Bob says like you know, he's a 28 year old young dude, he screwed up. Yep. You know, I, and he's right. He did screw up. I would concur. Uh, I mean, and don't get me wrong. I'm grateful that we know what we know. Definitely. You know, God bless Tom. De, uh, God bless uh, uh, Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar's a hero. Bob Lazar will possibly go down in history as uh, the greatest whistleblower of all time. You know, if, if any of this can be further confirmed. You know, um, he's already by uh, almost the most popular one. You know, people aren't talking about his Julian Assange as much or Edward Snowden as much. Yeah, I mean, with all all this, this is when I said when I said before about it's becoming very youthful, 
um, the whole thing with Stephen Greer going on, um, what's his name, um, Logan Paul, uh, Bob Lazar's documentary coming out on Netflix, uh, done by Corbell. Uh, we've got Robbie Williams from the UK getting into the UFO field. It's all becoming very hip. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's becoming oh, very sure. the in thing. Um, and I always, I have suspicions about that. Why, why, why is it all becoming this, you know, there's the whole, the Joe yeah. Rogan thing, the uh, Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders at the end of, is, it, is that his surname, Sanders? Oh yeah, the, the, uh, the state, yeah, DeLong went after him, dude. DeLong accused him of lying. What, Bernie? Yep. He says that Bernie was already briefed. Oh, okay. You know, which also, like, but at the same time, I forgive Bernie. I, say, I was briefed on the UFO matter. <laughs> I cannot say anything else. You know, hey, I, I don't know much about American politics, but I watched uh, the Joe Rogan um, interview with, together with another five million. How many has watched that video? I don't know how many views it's got, but I'm sure it's got a lot of views. But the, the guy seems like a decent human being. No, I love Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is my only favorite politician. Yeah. They're all, they're all the rest are scum. I would have uh, that I guy like over here. Andrew Yang also... Um, is like awesome, and but Andrew Young is very young, and I think after the Democrats screw Bernie again, which they're going to do again, because um, uh, Bernie won, Bernie won, Bernie won the primary last time. Yeah, I, I saw that. The institutionalized Democrats they flavored Hillary. They hijacked the party and then threw Hillary at, uh, at Trump, and she bounced off, and Trump won. Uh, you know, so uh, and and I and I and 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 Bernie's message is still something that corporate elites don't want to get, um, yeah. and that to their detriment. And I think, if, like you know, when they when they screw Bernie again out of the nomination and they force like like a Biden Harris ticket or something on us that is going to be unpopular and it's not going to, you know, no matter how many smiling celebrities you put up front, uh, it's not going to convince anybody. Um, that this is who we support. Um, once that fails, and Trump gets a second term as a result, uh, I think they're going to be seeing like you know a Yang in a much more favorable light. Like I said, Yang is much younger, and I think Yang is probably going to be uh, the uh, the uh, heir to Bernie's legacy, and yeah. Yang just might get in at some point. Well, well, the thing is that they said to me that he's not going to get a chance to get in. Is especially when he was talking about the pharmaceutical companies, because the people at the top of the triangle will not want to lose that. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, like, like I said, change from within. Like, yeah, they'll 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 bring up the free energy systems when they're not free anymore. Yeah. They charge you for them. Uh, it just you know, and and that's like, listen, you can't just make stuff for free. Unfortunately, we don't have that. You know, we, we, it's not. You know, Star Trek: The Next Generation. We've no replicators yet. Um, you know, you can't just send somebody the gist and they can make their own. Yeah. Um, you know, someday with three D printing and such, yeah, maybe we can do that at some point. But only because somebody sold you the three D printer. Yeah, but I think three D printed food would probably give you cancer or something like that. I don't. No, that's going to be like no, because the technology is going to be so advanced. It's going to be like. 3D printing is basically nanotechnology for the most part, and it will increasingly be like nanotechnology. So it's like, um, say you want a steak, you know, well, all you need is a component materials. Well, what is the component material of a steak? Component material of a steak is a cow. What is the component material of a cow? Well, you are what you eat, so it's basically grass and dirt. You know, so basically what you do is you take the grass and the dirt and you put it in the 3D printer, and it rearranges the glass and the grass and the dirt into uh, uh, Kobe Porterhouse, you know. And that's the thing. It, and it'll and it'll be real meat. It won't be fake meat. In fact, it'll be real better than fake meat because it'll be like American Kobe with omega three fatty acids inside. Because like you know you can be like fancy like that, and um, it would taste great and it would be a real steak. And, and you wouldn't know the difference because it's an actual steak. It's just we we, we bypassed the whole 
you know, the, turning the, you know, the, 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 it goes from, from uh, uh, dirt and grass to meat directly. I'm, sh- as I'm sure the cows places. would be a lot happier. Pardon? I'm sure the cows would be a lot happier. Oh, yeah. No, I'm fine with that. If you can make perfect meat, and I can still have a medium rare steak, and it's a medium rare steak. Now I'm not losing any flavor or anything, and I'm not trying to pretend it's like something that's better than it is, like with like you know vegan food or something. Um, then I'm fine with that. I'm perfect. With oh, well, it. I'm Play a I'm a rare man, rare. Oh, uh, a medium uh, rare. Pure uh, vi- I pure Viking. Pure Viking. food. Sorry, you know. Yeah, my, I, mine's mine's practically blue. When I went to <laughs> I, I went to. Um, thailand and i had a crab raw mm. just literally oh. they and and it was just like eating snot oh. it was nice snot don't get me wrong but it was snot yeah no i prefer my meat cooked i got yeah. like in general uh i'm not into cold they're doing that now they have these japanese spots with raw beef like high quality oh i like beef. that well what's that called oh that yeah stuff? right up your alley yeah yeah, I, 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 I'm I, honestly, I. When I went to China, I was disappointed that I didn't get to eat any insects because I thought I usually see them with the the crickets and that, and they put them on the yeah. steaks. Uh, and sticks, yeah. I did eat sn- snake. That was amazing, uh, but I didn't get a chance to try any sort of um, scorpion or anything like that. I'd love to try that sort of stuff. I would like to try snake. I would eat snake. Oh, snake's fantastic! Yeah, it was a bit like KFC. I've heard good, th- yeah, I've heard good, th- you know what's supposed to be amazing is gator. Yeah, I've eaten, I've eaten gator before. Really? In a curry. Alligator. Really? A- an alligator curry, yeah, I kid you not. It's like a cross between, um, it's a bit like pork with a fishy kind of, can't explain it. But pork, if, if a pork and a lobster were to have sex... That's, be an yeah, that's what that's what the meat would be like. If you've if you you've had lobster, obviously being the states, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, I love lobster. Um, yeah, we've got onto food now, haven't we? Yeah, it's making me hungry. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we're going to dinner. I know what to get you. I'll, if someone buys me a lobster, friends for life. Lobster's expensive. It's like it is. Is it, is it is it expensive in the states? Uh, it can be, but it, like you know, for for a bunch of sea roaches, which is basically what they are. You know? Yeah. Well, they used to eat lobster, um, and I can't remember. I think it was like slaves on ships. Oh yeah, used to, no, they used no, to dude. Eat. Fucking lobster was like lobster was like bar- the equivalent of barbecue. Uh, yeah. Like American barbecue is almost all this meat that people used to discard. Because you couldn't cook it, like rib meat and stuff, which turns out it's the best meat if you, you cook it right. When you cook that, it's... The perfect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, lobster was, like, I saw this thing about, uh, uh, recently about the history of lobster, and, and basically, uh, yeah, that was, like, poor people's food. It was refuse, uh, you know, and then the thing is, it was really, really good. And um, over time, somebody figured that out, and then they started, you know, Selling the lobsters, and then people just you know, then this demand came about for lobsters and stuff like uh, it's a lot of weird things. It's like potato chips used to be a rich man's side order, yeah, you know, and then eventually somebody figured out a way to put them in black and bags, and then you know, the common man had them for the first time, and now, like, you know, everybody eats potato chips. I don't even think about it, yeah, you don't normally see like a prim and proper person, posh person eating a packet of crisps. Yeah, but you did before. Like yeah. that was big. Also, peas. Like if you were rich, you ate peas. Everything's they had like, Yeah, they had, like they had like uh, like the, the something pea society. I, I remember, and it was like this really fancy club in New yeah. York to be a part of. And they 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 had like these weird like 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 political organizations to encourage the eating of peas. You know, and then it's a, it's a weird like history is odd. It's like you know uh, they introduced beer. You know, as a substitute for drinking gin, because everybody was drinking gin in Europe, and they were like, you know, like like cold mugs, and it was like killing everybody. M- mugs of gin. Yes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, I like a gin and tonic, but a mug of it. Wow. 
Yeah, bro. Like this is like you know, like, you see the old pirate movies. It's like, all right, give me a Rome, and they give him the whole Stein. There's not a shot in there. Wow. You know, that's the yeah. yeah. People were like, it's amazing we made it this far. So before I move on and go cook a meal, is there anything else we, that we haven't touched on that we wanted to touch on in this video? Let me see. Sky jelly. Sky jelly. It sounds amazing, doesn't it? Sky jelly. It does. It's probably good. Uh, <laughs> not the only thing I eat that makes me sick, so whatever. Uh. There, there is, if there's, not, if there's nothing more on the list... Um, there is something that we started with musk and we'll end with mm. musk. What do you think to this merging of AI that he's talking about doing? Have you seen? I think it's, listen, there's no, there's no favorite Elon projects that I don't agree with. Like at all. Like, I mean, like I'm like, I'm right, dude, sign me up. I'll go to Mars. Like if like he's talking about sending hundreds of people at a time, dude, I'll go. I, I, you know, like I'll, I'll join do you. the training. I'll go, you know, I, and like, what am I doing here? You know, I'll be the first ufologist on Mars. Maybe that's how I make my big, uh, uh, splash, you know, um, like I, am I against, uh, artificial, like merging with artificial intelligence? No, of course not. I'm saying, man, you and I already are merged with artificial intelligence. We have cell phones. Oh, yeah. Our lives are so much better. You're going to tell me. That like you, you could you could do a, you you can even basically have one that you can install in me in a non invasive way that essentially gives me superpowers. I I do disagree there though, Oz. I, I have to say I don't think we're better people. I think well, no, I, I, I think I we're, we're more we're, knowledgeable. No. I don't think we're better people. For be for technology I think has made us um ignorant and it's made as um it's the word i'm looking for it has made us very anti-sociable even though i, this, I, I think that but social I, I media because, has made us anti anti-social i i don't know if that's true man like uh uh i'm talking to you and you're in england the, yeah, this is this is this is this is different because me and you are fine specimens but if you yeah, no, it's how you use it it's all how yeah. you that's the thing yeah you could be a douche. You could be an RDB and use this to just for for nonsense. You know, like uh, uh, cat videos and watching some guy getting hit in the nuts. You know, <laughs> like that. That's totally. You have these opportunities to do that. At the same time, you can also use this thing to, to explore th obscure theoretical physics and material sciences and the fact that you have the Earth is being visited by somebody. Me and my wife. The only way to do it. Yeah, me and my wife went to a wedding. Yeah. And we noticed this couple together. They arrived together. They was it through the ceremony. They was on the phones, yeah. Until obviously it started. Then they put them away. Then during the meal, and after the meal, through the party and what have you, you could just see them just on the phones, not enjoying the actual the occasion. Or mingling with other people. There's a lot of people like that that just that very and this there's, there's probably sadly people watching this video that struggle to actually have a conversation, do you know, with with another human being face to face. Be no, well, I, I put it to you this way: perhaps those people would have that same struggle, you know, with a, for, uh, to have a conversation with a person face to face. Without that phone, however, because of that phone, okay. they are actually having more communications with human beings than I they would, would, you know, have before. I I'll mean, give like you it's, that. it's. I think a lot of that is ludditeism, and and, and 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 like you know, like 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 it, new technologies are always getting, you know, like well, it's going to ruin society. You mean like television was supposed to, uh, the boob tube was supposed to make you stupid, even though like everybody used it to watch the History Channel and Discovery Channel and have learned. Quite a bit more than they did yeah. from reading books in high school, you know. About you know, uh, I, I think that a lot of that is overblown. Uh, every time they say, "Well, this is that technology. This is what's going to do us in," you always transform into something bigger and better, and those people just go away. I mean, like, do you remember? Like, uh, uh, I remember being a little boy and hearing comedians making jokes about how hard it was to use computers, and yeah. everybody would laugh and ah ha ha, computers those are dumb. Those are for nerds, <laughs> and you know. I'm saying, man, 
none of those people are around anymore. I it's struggle. Busy, I struggle. I struggle to use a computer. I do. Honestly, I really do. I the I literally because when I started my channel, I would re screen rec screen record myself and just press upload to YouTube. I wouldn't tag the video. Nothing. It, I've, it's only recently over the last year or so that I've actually thought, you know what, I need to actually... So I looked at some YouTube videos, how to edit on Final Cut Pro, and slowly, I'm slowly learning. And I'm just trying to keep it simple, but trying to... I am begging Osvaldo Franco here to have his own channel, uh, but he's not. Re you're not ready yet. You got a lot. He's a lot of research to do. You just don't want to rush into it, which I understand that, my friend. But it needs to be done. Uh, it does. It, it'll, it'll get done at some point. Yeah. Well, you you see him in the comments, so you could pre-subscribe because he'll. You'll, would you use the same YouTube channel that you're using now to talk? More or less. Actually, you know what. Throw up my, my, my Instagram. That's usually a better way of getting in touch with me. I will definitely share your Instagram. Um, it's the least I can do for everything that you do for this channel, Osvaldo, mate. Dude, just throw that up and decide that. Whatever I find, we're going to be talking about anyway. Yeah, so. we will. Um, and we will we will chat for a little bit after I end this video anyway, my friend. Uh, but I will say goodnight, God bless to the audience. And mind the bugs don't bite. Hit that like thumbs up thingy and uh, subscribe also, and, and, and not only that make sure that you forward these to other people because the algorithm yes. is treating us like crap they are the bastards it's probably because i swear too much <laughs> <laughs> that and yeah they just they, they don't like real people yeah well i mean there will probably be at some point another platform for people like myself um but uh, yeah. until that day God love YouTube. Good night, God bless people.